Hi, it's Carolyn. I want to thank you for joining me here in our Nutrition River 21 Day Rejuvenation Program. I am so excited that you've decided to come along on this journey with me. And I want to be able to take a moment right now and explain how to best use this program. So you bought this program probably because you were experiencing low energy or bad sleep or you feel really disorganized or you want to have better digestion or you want to just get yourself organized in a holistic fashion. So you've done the right thing. This includes every single area of your life. You're actually going to get all the material right now at once. Do not be overwhelmed. <laughs> it's a lot of material, but we're gonna work through it together over the 21 days. What I suggest you do first is just simply skim through the material that you got, because we are gonna help you to alkalize your body and eliminate certain foods that are acid forming, eliminate certain things that are known to create inflammation, we are going to put you on a better daily schedule, which helps you to sleep better, get more motivated, and also make time for daily movement. You're also going to have a list. There's, well, there's lists of lists because I like to make lists of lists. And so you get my lists of lists. For checklists, basically I call them checklists of completion for your body, for your household, maybe even for your business if you're an entrepreneur. So what's gonna happen here is, this is a general program, but it's gonna get individually tailored to you very, very quickly. And so if you're dealing with things like chronic congestion or you know, bad hair, skin breakouts, inability to lose weight, joint pain, all of these things are gonna get addressed one way or another in this program. So for 21 days, we're all gonna be in this together and you're gonna do things that you know you're doing with other people, like drinking a glass of lemon water, you know what I mean? Or like making sure you have enough protein in every meal. The other thing that you're gonna get here are four new habits that you're going to institute in the beginning of your day, in the middle of your day, and at the end of the day. These are very easy, don't worry. They only take a second and some of them you're only doing in your mind. But again, you have a checklist for this, so you won't forget. I encourage you to print out the daily checklists so that you can actually have them in front of you, carry them around or, you know, share them, you know, like um, take a photo, have it on your phone. Because your ultimate successes, like your greatest successes are going to come from your daily habits. And so when we talk about accountability and consistency and discipline, like this is where you're going to win. So I've given you your four new items to do at your morning routine, four things to do over the course of your day, and four things to do at the end of the day. Go ahead and read those over now so they sort of percolate into your subconscious. I've given you a whole lot of checklists for completion for many parts of your life. Everything from your like self-care and beauty products to how to organize your office. Take a look, print them out, especially the ones that you feel are the most pertinent to you. If you choose to food log during this program, I highly suggest that you use MyFitnessPal. And of course, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching that goes along with this that's, that you can buy in addition to that complements this program. And if you use MyFitnessPal, I'll be able to actually look at your food logs every day and give you individualized, unique feedback on what I'm seeing. So if you feel like you're really starting from scratch, start there. <laughs> Otherwise, you're also going to find lots of lists of food, like foods that gluten um, is found in, foods that are wheat substitutes, foods that are dairy substitutes. You're going to find a whole bunch of lists on the optimum food choices that you can actually print out and bring to the grocery store with you. This, 
this 21 day program is a compendium of resources for you. Please get familiar with it <laughs> and utilize it. So that's, that's basically like my suggestion to you for right now is go through all the material. You don't have to read it word for word, but when something um, resonates with you, take a moment and, and start there for a second. Like maybe it's the article we have about healthy fats. Maybe that's like, wow, I, I know intuitively that's something I need more of in my diet. Take a second, read about the best sources and the worst sources. <clears throat> I'm gonna be chatting with you again in just about 10 days to see where you're at with your lists, with your daily routines, the daily habits, what's hard, what's easy, what's giving you the most bang for your buck, shall we say, and what you're really struggling with. So stay tuned, I'll be in your inbox every single day until then giving you some tips and tricks and inspiration. But in the meantime, thank you so much for being a part of Nutrition River. Thank you so much for purchasing our 21 day rejuvenation program. And please feel free to reach out to us, to our, um, to our website, to our emails. We will get back to you. I have a whole team supporting us here and, and we'll get back to you within 48 hours with any problems or questions that you have. Until next time, once again, my name is Carolyn. I'm the nutritional director here at Nutrition River. And I really thank you for being part of our program today. Hey everybody, it's me, Carolyn, the Nutritional Director here at Nutrition River. Welcome to day two of your 21 day rejuvenation program. I'm just checking in with you really quickly today because like I tell my kids all the time, how you do anything is how you do everything. So I told you I was gonna support you during this entire program. So I will show up every day in this entire program to support you. My one question for you today is, did you make your bed? <laughs> if you made your bed, congratulations, high five, kudos. If you didn't make your bed, you only have one excuse. Then the one valid excuse is if there was someone else sleeping in it still. You're off the hook. Everyone else, you're not off the hook. It takes two minutes, people. And it really does make a big difference in terms of accomplishing something, a simple task right away, and then also at the end of the day to be able to come home to orderliness. Chaos begets chaos, okay? And so if you can really take just two minutes, 60 seconds if you have a little twin bed, <laughs> to pull up the covers, tuck everything in, and leave your space of rest in an orderly fashion so that you can come back at the end of the day and no matter what chaos happened that day, at least you're coming back to an orderly resting space. That's all. I'll see you again tomorrow on day three. Thanks for being a part of our 21 day rejuvenation program. Hi, it's Carolyn again. Hey, it's day three. How you doing? <laughs> I wanted to make sure you made your bed this morning because if you watched yesterday's video, you know why and you know your one excuse for not doing it that's legal. So today I want to make sure that you're taking the time to get in at least 96 ounces, I'm going to say it out loud, 96 ounces of water. Pure, clean water. So many people are walking around in a chronically dehydrated state. They don't feel energetic. Their skin looks bad. <laughs> they don't have any energy. And their body is not able to assimilate all of the vitamins and nutrients that they're taking in through food. Please, please, please do the thing and have an eight ounce glass of lemon water this morning or tomorrow morning or right now or whenever you're watching this. It's gonna to help to balance your pH levels. It's gonna get you onto that 96 ounce track. And it's a good habit. See you tomorrow. Hey everybody, it's Carolyn and it's day 
four. How's it going? You've probably made your bed already, so I didn't have to remind you. You've probably already had your glass of lemon water. But have you taken those five minutes to write down your intentions for the day? I'm serious when I say this, it just programs your subconscious mind. You don't even have to work at this. If you can take five minutes and write down, I mean, I'm looking around because I have all of these scraps of paper everywhere that I write things down on. This doesn't have to be precious, okay? You can write this on the back of an envelope that is junk mail and you can promptly recycle it. But taking the time with an actual pen or pencil to write down your intentions of the day for how you want to feel goes a really long way to creating the life and lifestyle that you desire. So if you desire to feel healthy, you're gonna write down one of your intentions is, my intention is to feel strong and healthy. My intention is to feel vibrant and alive. My intention is to feel loved. My intention is to feel confident. These do not have to be long paragraphs. It's just, how do you wanna feel? Trust me when I say, it is the feeling that is always gonna carry you forward to your goals, much more so than the technical aspect of how you think you're gonna reach them. So, good luck with day four. Mwah. Great to see you, see you tomorrow. Hey everybody, it's day five <laughs> of your 21 day rejuvenation program here at Nutrition River. So today I really wanted to talk to you about how your morning routine is coming along. Bed, the water, the intention setting, but also the food. Now let me point out that some people's breakfast comes a little later in the day. Nowhere in here am I saying that you need to eat within 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 120 minutes of waking up. Because everyone's metabolic clock works a little bit differently. That's why if you choose to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I can really help you dial in the actual timing of your meals. On nutritionriver.com, we have a ton of really well-researched articles on intermittent fasting that might be a great solution for you too. But the first meal of the day during this program, I really do encourage you to create out of about 70% of plant-based foods. Read through your material to know what I'm talking about. But during that first meal of the day, you're really, really re-energizing your body. Please re-energize it after the fast of sleep however long you choose that fast to be, with foods that are nourishing and are not gonna spike your blood sugar. So, what's up with breakfast? Are you having a hard time navigating that? If so, on nutritionriver.com, there's always a chat box available 24 seven for you to type in your questions, problems, whatever. We will get back to you within 24 hours. Pinky swear. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Hey everybody, it's Carolyn and it is day six for you in our 21 day rejuvenation program. So today I'm just coming in to check in with you one more time about the morning routine. It takes time to create new routines, okay? So we all know this, so give yourself a break, but I'm here to help you start to create these healthier habits just by simply reminding you. I'm your accountability partner here for the 21 days. So uh, have you started on your water already? <laughs> you know, have you made your intentions for the day? But more than anything, do you know what you're going to eat today, right? Because remember, part of this is eliminating the top five inflammatory foods. And those are gluten, corn, soy, dairy, and white sugar. So those, are, those, those five foods are so prevalent in our standard American diet in our basically like food chain at this point, that 
it can be tricky to actually avoid them if you don't have a plan. Okay, so in the program notes here, like in the workbook that you got, there are so many lists of alternative grains and alternative foods, but you might be asking like, what is so bad about gluten anyhow? Like, what's the big deal? So I just wanted to take a second today and just get you thinking about something. And that is the fact that the wheat, wheat is not bad, it's not good or bad, it's just a plant at the end of the day, but Listen, you guys, the wheat that we grow today looks nothing like the wheat that was grown in Egypt 2,000 years ago, okay? So like when wheat was start, first started to be cultivated, it had like seven chromosomes, you know? And now because we've hybridized it so many times to get massive yields and multiple crops per year, the whole like DNA structure of wheat it is, looks nothing like it did for our ancestors. That I believe that's part of the reason that we have so much gluten intolerance these days. Not because gluten is bad. It's just simply because the wheat that we're eating has been modified <laughs> a lot since the dawn of time. So if you need more resources, if you need more recipes, if you need more ideas of how to deal with alternative grains like quinoa, or amaranth, or teff, or buckwheat, or whatever you want, please, let us know. You can always send an email to Nutrition River. We'll get back to you within a day. And we're here to help. So good job with your morning routine. Part of it is planning for your day. I know you've already done it. I'll see you tomorrow. Day seven's coming up. See you then. Hey, everybody. It's day seven. Seven. All right, so first week of your 21-day rejuvenation program in the books. So today I wanted to remind you about something that I call daily movement, wink, wink, aka exercise. Part of the program here and part of your daily checklist, as you well know, is exercise or moving your body. Human beings are made to move. We were not meant to be sedentary creatures. So walking, you guys, walking is easy. Walking, you can walk. I mean, well, maybe you can't walk, but most of you guys can walk. And if you can walk, today you're going to get up and walk. And the whole idea of, you know, like the 10,000 steps and getting a pedometer and that kind of thing, more so than anything, that's a reality check. Like if you are not, if you are not at least that active, that's like baseline active. It is time to rethink your regimen and re time to rethink what you've decided is non-negotiable. So the daily movement piece can be anything that makes you happy. I mean, maybe it's cycling, maybe it's walking, maybe it's running, maybe it's Zumba, maybe it's bowling, maybe it's tennis, I don't know. But make sure that you've got in your schedule a piece for daily movement. You're moving your body, you're breathing, you're sweating, you're feeling alive, okay? So as a human being, you are meant to do this. I will see you tomorrow on day eight and we'll enter into week two together. Let me know if you need anything else. You can always email us here at Nutrition River and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, hey you guys, welcome to day eight, your 21 day rejuvenation program. Remember, it takes at least 21 days for new things to become habits. So be patient with yourself. I'm here to motivate you, hold you accountable day after day after day. Today, I really just wanted to get you to think about and start to notice the beautiful pieces that are starting to come together for you. Every morning, you write down your intentions for the day. <coughs> Three, two, one. Every morning, you write down your intentions for the day. Your job today is to start to affirm and recognize when those intentions come to fruition throughout the day. You're making intentions. Your subconscious is carrying them around with you. 
Now I need your conscious mind to pick up where that left off. And when you actually see yourself living out, being an example of those intentions that you set, I need you to just stop for a minute and say, wow, hey, it's working. Wow, hey, I did that. I am becoming that person. I am that person. Affirming when your intentions occur. That's your assignment for day eight. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey everybody, it's Carolyn and you are on day nine of your 21 day rejuvenation program. Congratulations. Today I wanted to mention a little bit of something about your evening routine, okay? So we've got the morning routine down. During the day, you've been noticing when your intentions are happening, you're prepping your food, you're getting your daily exercise in. What often happens though, is that there's this witching hour, right? Kind of after dinner and before bed, where a lot of you guys are going to self-sabotage. I'm here to address that today. If you are doing all of the things all day long, you owe it to yourself to not self-sabotage at night. So what do I mean by that? Oftentimes we'll do things, we'll eat too much, we'll drink too much, we'll get into whatever bad habit we have in the evenings out of boredom, fatigue, and habit. So if you find yourself going to the fridge at 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night and opening it up every commercial, opening it up every commercial, expecting to see something different in there, that's crazy. Ask yourself, am I tired? Should I go to bed? Ask yourself, am I bored? Am I doing this because I don't have anything to occupy myself? Ask yourself, am I really hungry or do I just always eat at this time and I'm just doing it out of habit? Have a reality check with yourself. Have a little conversation. If you need any help with these things, this is what I'm here for. I can help you figure out why it is that you're doing your self-sabotage things at the end of the day. But the first thing is to recognize it and admit it. So that's your assignment for today on day nine. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey everybody, it's Carolyn. How are you? Today is day 10 of your 21 day rejuvenation program here in Nutrition River. How's it going? <laughs> and be honest, I can't hear you. Anyhow, what I need you to do today is take a little bit of a reflection on how you started out, like those first three days. Were you really, really gung-ho? Did you fill out all your charts? By day five, were you kind of falling off the wagon a little bit? Now here we are at day 10. What's up? I highly suggest at this point you take out a journal, um, you take out a blank piece of paper, or you send me an email. Let me know or journal out what has been the easiest thing for you to adhere to in this program. Maybe it was making your bed. Maybe it was drinking the lemon water. Um, maybe it was the positive affirmations. I'm not sure. What was the hardest thing that, has, that you've had to adhere to in this program? Was it making exercise a daily non-negotiable item? That happens for a lot of people because we have all of these excuses that we have. It's the tape, right, that runs in our head. We don't have time. We're too tired. We forgot our tennis shoes whatever the case may be. So do a little exercise for me where you're writing down the easiest thing that has been to adhere to that you're probably gonna stick to for the rest of your life. And then the thing that's been the toughest to adhere to that you haven't quite figured out how to incorporate successfully yet. <clears throat> you haven't given up, but we're, there's, there's a challenge. There's, there's still a block to get over. The other thing I would love to hear about or for you to think about or for you to journal about is 
what are some new things that you've tried? Like, did you try spirulina? Did you try some wheatgrass? Did you try any of the other like green superfoods? Did you try some of the recipes? What was your favorite one? What did your family love? What did they hate? Just go back and think a little bit about like, okay, what were the successes? What were the things that weren't completely successful? Because the more you can do this, the more it helps sort it out in your mind, what you're gonna do more of in the future and what you need to ask for help with in the future. Because listen, none of us can be everybody to everybody. Like we can't be everything to everyone. We can't, we're not all running around with a cape on. You know what I mean? So we have to figure out where it is in our lives that we need to ask for help. We need to enlist help. Maybe, re you remember when you went through the, the daily checklist for like fat finances and personal business and I was listing out like, okay, you need a CPA, you need an attorney, you need, are all of these checklists done? Maybe some of you looked at these lists and, they were, and you were like, wow, I don't have anyone like this on my team yet. These are some things that you just need to simply acknowledge and maybe think about the reasons why. Why don't I have my power of attorney filled out yet? I mean, there's no reason not to, <laughs> you know? Why all of the things, right? Like why haven't I forgiven this person over here for something that happened at Christmas 12 years ago? Why? So the checklists are meant for you to really be able to feel fulfilled, feel safe, feel confident that every single day you're organized <clears throat> to the best of your ability. And so I've put those together as very comprehensive lists. Not all of them will apply to you. And if they don't apply to you, you just NA, right? So how are you doing? It is day 10. Check in with us, okay? Let us know how you're doing, what, what you need more help with, what you need more information on, what you're never going to let go of. Here at Nutrition River, we love to hear not only about people's successes, but also about what you're struggling with, because that gives us ideas of how to help you better. We're constantly making highly researched reports for you, right? To basically answer questions in a very scientifically proven way that might help you to solve some of the emotionally based problems you have around food or exercise or whatever the case may be. So on that note, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being a part of Nutrition River. Please let us know how we can help you further your journey down your own river of health and wellness. And until next time, I'm Carolyn and I'll see you soon. Hey everybody, it's Carolyn and welcome to day 11. So we're over halfway there, right? And you've got your morning routine down. You've got your middle of the day routine down. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the evening routine. And one of the most important things, and I wrote this down in your program, is to actually do the dishes, like to actually clean up the kitchen and leave it in a nice, clean, beautiful state for you to find in the morning. A lot of this is the same idea of making your bed, right? So we want to be able to practice completing a task, completing a cycle. So after dinner, you're going to do your dishes, you're going to throw away the trash, you're going to basically leave the kitchen in an inviting state for in the morning because you really want to get the day off going on the right foot, which is to feel organized, which is to feel uncluttered, which is to feel like, okay, yes, I'm ready for this new day. So it is important. I mean, clear out the dishes from the sink, wash the glasses, toss them in the dishwasher, do whatever you need to do, but do the thing, even if you're tired, even if you don't want to, even if it's a pile. And if worse comes to worse, have a teenager do it, <laughs> delegate. So 
that's my message for you for today. Really, that is something that's part of the evening routine that I need you to get going on if you haven't done it already. I'll be back tomorrow with more tips. See you then. Hey, it's Carolyn. Welcome to day 12. I'm so proud of you. You're still here with me. This is awesome. You're doing great and I'm so proud of you for actually sticking to your intentions, sticking to what you said you were going to do. I'm going to do this for 21 days and you're still here with me at day 12. The thing I wanted to address today is part of the evening routine again is taking a minute or, you know, 10 or whatever, right before you go to sleep. I wanted to remind you that while you are asleep, your subconscious mind is at work. While we rest, our subconscious mind is really, really busy and active solving all of the problems that we considered during the day. The things that are on our mind get filtered and solved and worked through during our unconscious hours. This is also the best time to actually plant a thought or suggest a question for your subconscious to work on. So instead of like watching the evening news, which is usually bad, and then having that in the forefront of your mind and going to sleep, guess what you're gonna be dreaming about and thinking about all night long? Instead, may I suggest turning off all of your electronics far before you're actually going to close your eyes. Do not fall asleep in front of the TV. Do not fall asleep with your phone. Instead, either write in your journal or read an inspiring book, something that's going to get your subconscious mind involved in your personal growth. So if there are things that you're working on, if there's things that you're struggling with, if there's a question that you can't really come up with the answer to, right before bed is the best time to write that down and say, you know, thank you, thank you for helping me come up with the solution for this problem. You write down what the problem is. I know there is a solution because on the backside of any problem is the solution. It's the same coin, two sides. So tonight, before you go to bed, make sure that you have some quiet time. Make sure that you are going to bed with positive thoughts, positive affirmations, and the, con the notion that you are going to solve a problem while you're asleep. See how it goes. Call me crazy later. Okay, see you tomorrow. Hi, welcome to day 13. Here we go. Today, what I wanted to remind you of, in case you have forgotten by now, because we're almost two weeks in, you have a bunch of charts. In the 21 Day Rejuvenation Program, I've created multiple charts for every single area of your life. If you haven't addressed those charts yet, I really encourage you today to take another look at them, print them out, do whatever you need to do. But those are very comprehensive charts of things that you just basically need to have happening at this point in order to feel all the bases are covered, right? So I have lists of team members, I have lists of things you need to accomplish, lists of beauty products, lists, of, lists for holidays, lists for everything. Go ahead and take a look again at those lists. Go down the checklist, see what is applicable for you, and by all means, add more, subtract some, whatever it's gonna take for you to feel complete in that area of your life. These are all different life zone areas. So today, remember the lists. Go down the lists, subtract what doesn't mean anything, add the things that are important, and then one line item at a time. Go and get it done. You can do this. I'll see you tomorrow. Hi, guess what? It's your two week anniversary. It is day 14 out of 21. 
congratulations. I'm only here today to not remind you of the things you're not doing, to not give you a hard time about what you haven't completed yet, but instead today I wanna to give you a pat on the back. Two weeks in, there's things that you've found work, there's things that you've found don't work. Here's the thing, at this point, it is really, really, really important that you keep your momentum. Keep your foot on the gas. When you're making positive changes, when things are starting to feel a little easy, when you're starting to cut a corner here or there, this is the time, you guys, I really, really, really need you to remember to keep your foot on the gas pedal, to keep going. Don't let up and coast a little bit, just keep pushing forward. If there's an area that you've been having a hard time with, maybe it's the food, maybe it's the nutrition, maybe it's the stress management, maybe it's the organization, I'm not sure. You can write me and tell me though. Um, it's, it's time to push your foot down on the accelerator even further. So we're two weeks in, we have one week to go together. I'm excited, I hope you are too. I'll see you tomorrow. Keep the foot on the gas. Hello, greetings, welcome to day 15. Oh my gosh, we're on the home stretch of this together. Super excited. Today, I wanted to remind you about the importance of label reading, okay? I know it's boring, I know that half the words you can't pronounce, but that's even a bigger reason to really stay focused on this. So remember, harken back, right, those top five inflammatory foods that we were talking about from the very beginning. Gluten, corn, soy, dairy, white sugar. These foods are so prevalent in any processed and packaged foods. You don't even know until you actually start to really, really read the labels. You're looking for things like soy lecithin, canola oil, high fructose corn syrup, MSG. There is so much corn and soy in our, in our food, it's just insane. And the reason that I'm on the soapbox about this today is that over 95% of the corn and the soy that are grown in this country, as in the United States, are genetically modified. There have been no longitudinal studies that have ever been done that say that genetically modified foods are safe and healthy for humans. Yes, they yield huge crops. Yes, we could end world hunger. Are we? Not sure. Instead, we have a ton of surplus of corn and soy. So it ends up in a lot of our foods. These are inflammatory foods for most people, so I encourage you to start to read labels. In your 21-day rejuvenation program package here, I've included lots of lists like other names of sugars, right? Um, other names for corn and soy. Like you're gonna actually start to find the different words that you're looking for on labels. If you can't pronounce it, it's probably better to put back on the shelf. This brings me to my next point for today is as you're reading labels and you feel like, wow, this is a really highly processed food. Why am I buying this? This is a great question. Ask yourself, why am I buying this food? Is it for nutrition? Is it out of habit? Is it because you have a craving for something? Like what is going on? Does it look like how it grew? And if the answer is no, go ahead and put it back. You have a lot of options and you're worth it. So put the processed food back, read the labels. If you have questions about specific ingredients, feel free to email us. We'll get back to you on what it really is. Okay, see you tomorrow. Hey, greetings, welcome to day 16. We're on the final push. How's the exercise coming? We're gonna circle back to that for just a minute. On your daily charts, where it says daily movement, what have you been filling that in with? Is it sufficient? Are you making excuses? Are you saying, I don't have time, I'm too tired, oh, I forgot my gym shoes, what's going on? 
I wanted to remind you today that it's really, really important as you look throughout your, your week long list of what you're doing, that there are cardio pieces like cardio workouts, and there are also strength training workouts. In order to keep your metabolism running, in order to prevent osteoporosis, in order to look good in your genes, you have to do strength building activities, okay? That's not walking, it's not swimming, it's not biking. All of those are non-weight bearing activities. You have to actually do something where you are stimulating bone and muscle growth. And that happens through gravity and weight. So as you're looking through your week long exercise journal, I need you to make sure that you're not only doing cardiovascular exercise, but you're also doing strength training exercises. The strength training does not have to be more than two, maybe three days a week, but it has to be in there, okay? It's, it's kind of non-negotiable. So if you need help with that, if you need ideas, if you need a personal trainer, admit this to yourself and then get the help that you need. You can always email me here at Nutrition River. You can always ask at your gym if there's somebody who can, you know, show you how to use the weight machines or try a different class, you know, group fitness style, get a, get a workout buddy, go on to bodybuilding.com or some other, you know, like weight, you know, exercise website that has workout routines and give some a try. Try high intensity interval training, HIIT, H-I-I-T. HIIT training is super effective. You get it done. It's short and sweet. Google it, H-I-I-T. It's where you're doing an intense exercise for maybe 40 seconds, and then you have 20 seconds of rest. 40 on, 20 off, 40 on, 20 off for maybe 20 minutes. I mean, you can get a ton done in a short period of time when you're working with intensity. There's a little fitness acronym that everyone in the industry knows, but maybe you haven't heard about it. When you have hit a, a fitness plateau, right? When when you feel like, wow, things aren't changing anymore. This used to work, it doesn't work. It's called FIT, F-I-T-T. And so there's four variables you can look at in your exercise routine when you've hit a plateau or when you don't know where else to go. The first one is the F frequency. I, intensity. T, time. T, type. Frequency, intensity, time, and type. Those are the four variables that you can look at for your fitness routine to see where you can mix it up, to see where you can take things to the next level. You're worth it, okay? So that's my reminder for today. I will see you tomorrow. Hi, it is day 17. I mean, 17 days we have been together doing this. Congratulations, you're doing amazing. Yesterday, we talked a little bit about the FIT principle and variables in your exercise routine. So today I just wanted to remind you that there should be variables in your eating routine as well. Because listen, check it out. Nowhere, in the history of mankind, have we ever had access to all the foods from all the world all the time? It's not normal. Normally, people eat seasonally. People eat what grows regionally. There is greater variety in doing this. And I wanted to suggest that a lot of the food allergies that people have nowadays come from the fact that they're eating the same food over and over and over every single day. When you eat the same food over and over and over and over and over and over, your body starts to make antibodies against it. It creates food allergies. So my suggestion today is to eat the rainbow, okay? When I say eat the rainbow, how many colors can you have on your plate at one given time? Where is your food coming from? Can you connect to the source? Is this food even in season right now? Like if you're eating strawberries in November, I don't know where you got those or where they grew, but that was not natural. You know what I'm saying? If you're, trying, if you're eating asparagus in December, 
Once again, that came from somewhere far, far away. So my suggestion for you today is to take a peek at what at, at your menu, right? At your food log, at what you're putting on your plate and ask yourself, where did this come from? Is this in season? Did I eat this exact same thing yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before? So the first two rules in any nutrition program is A, does it look like how it grew? And B, eat the rainbow. If you are missing one of those two components, today is the day to look at changing up what's on your grocery list. Simple. We start with what we've got. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, you guys. Hi, it's Carolyn, and guess what? It's day 18. It's the final countdown. We're, it's almost time to say goodbye for now. Like, I'm starting to get a little sad and emotional about the whole thing, but, but not yet, because today our topic is stress management. So <laughs> what I wanted to tell you today is that you've been doing so amazing. You've been doing so amazing. You've got the morning routine down. You've figured out what's working for you. You've got a great exercise routine happening. You've called on some friends. You've asked for the help that you need. You're recognizing when all of your amazing intentions are happening on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment, very mindful practice. And so today I just wanted to bring up that whole idea of mindfulness as far as stress management goes. Because what do we know to be true? We know that stress causes disease, and we know that inflammation causes disease. So we've already eliminated the top five inflammatory foods, plus you've been on the lookout for other foods that maybe don't settle so well with you. And now it's time to think about mitigating the amount of stress that you have in your life to the greatest extent that you possibly can. And there's, there's four A's to stress management. The first one is just to simply avoid the stressor, right? Go a different way. Stop talking to that person. Quit doing that. Okay, sometimes we can't avoid the stress. If we can't avoid the stress, then we have to try to adopt new ways of dealing with the stress. We have to drive a slightly different path. We have to change where we normally sit. We have to do something different to adopt our lifestyle to fit the stressor in there to the best of our ability. If that still isn't working, we must adapt. And we must adapt our mindset and we must adapt how we interact with the stress. We have to adapt to it. So I've done lots of trainings on this and you can actually Google the four A's of stress management and find more information on this. Adapting to something like being a single mom. Sometimes you have to let go of perfectionism. Sometimes there's going to be mac and cheese at the end of the day. It's not the end of the world. We're all operating on this spectrum with the resources that we have, doing the best that we can. We adapt on a day-to-day -to -day -to basis with things that are out of our control. And the fourth A is that at the end of the day, if there is no way we can avoid, adopt, adapt to stress, we must finally come to a position where we can accept what is. And with acceptance, in my mind, in acceptance is intrinsically tied to forgiveness. We can't control other people. We can't control the weather. We can't control the stock market. We can only control the emotions and the thoughts that we have in response to things. And when we can accept other people for who they are with all their faults, when we can accept that the sun is gonna come up tomorrow, when we can accept that we cannot fix our parents' illness, whatever it is, there's a peace that can come over us as we realize that it's up to us just to simply do the best we can with what we have every single day. That's what you're doing here. And I'm proud of you. So 
forays of stress management, find those stressors in your life, write them down, and decide which A that's going to fall under. Okay, see you tomorrow. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is that you're watching this video. I'm so glad that you're still here on day 19. 19 days we have been together. We're wrapping up the program here, but I wanted to make a quick mention of something that I don't talk a lot about in the program itself. But as we keep talking about, you know, stress management and reducing inflammation and, you know, creating a healthier, holistic lifestyle, one of the very important things is to notice what's in your environment. Like, there are so many chemicals in our environment, in our cleaning products, in the air, things we can't necessarily see or feel, but we are surrounded by it. Things in fabric softener sheets. The list goes on and on. So there are something called xenoestrogens. Xenoestrogens are compounds that mimic estrogens that are found in harsh chemicals, chemical cleaning products, dry cleaning products, um, carpet cleaning products, in paint, in exhaust fumes. So Today, I really want you to start to be conscious of products that you're using and the products that you're putting on your skin. Your skin is your largest organ and everything you put on your skin, believe me, is absorbed into your skin and processed by your liver. Your liver is your ultimate detoxifying organ. And so you're doing all of this amazing work in this program. So now I need you to become like, go back up to the 10,000 foot level and look around and say, okay, you know, where are fumes coming from? What is actually in these cleaning products? What is in my skincare products? And start to look around at ways that you might start to swap out some chemicals for more natural based cleaning products and skincare products. <sighs> A quick Google search will tell you exactly what I'm talking about here. There's also lots of apps that will help you to shop in a more mindful and ultimately healthier way. If you have specific questions, we love to hear them here at Nutrition River. Please send us an email and we'll get back to you with more information on the product that you are having in question. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Greetings. It is day 20 of 21 days. We're wrapping it up. I wanted to say congratulations and to say how proud I am of you for going through this entire regimen with me. I really hope by now that you've actually started to feel like some of these new habits are the new normal. They're almost old habits now. You can see the benefits. Maybe your skin looks a little different. Maybe you're a little bit more focused. Maybe you've lost some weight. You never know. But it's day 20. So I wanted to remind you, quick overview of everything that we've talked about so far. And it's most basic. This whole rejuvenation program is a clean slate that helps you stay hydrated. It helps you stay eating clean. It helps you just with the habits in your household, right? Keeping things neat, keeping things tidy, keeping chaos at bay, <laughs> keeping inflammation at bay, managing your stress, getting enough sleep, all of the things that make life worthwhile living and give you energy, right? You're being a great role model to your kids, to your parents, to your neighbors, to your coworkers. All of the work that you've been doing has been noticed by other people. So one of the biggest takeaways from this program that I really, really hope that you found has been helpful is the mindfulness, is the, is the being present in every single activity that you're engaging in. Maybe you weren't up until now, but maybe now you've become more aware of 
the rainbow on your plate, if it's a cardio day or if it's a strength day, if you're managing this stressful situation well or if you are compensating in other ways. Maybe you need better boundaries. Maybe that has to become a non-negotiable. Who knows? These are all things that have probably been brought to light over the last three weeks together. So I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear your biggest takeaway from all of these last three weeks together. I'm gonna be back tomorrow, don't you worry. But until then, I would love to hear what your, what your greatest aha was, what your greatest challenge still is. It just helps us here at Nutrition River to create better content, more content, things that relevant content for you in the future. I'll see you tomorrow.